guys. So, I spent seven days in a psychiatric hospital. Before I get into it, I'm gonna put on the screen trigger warnings for everything that I talk about here. I'll give you a minute to pause the video, maybe click out if you need to. Okay, so on October 4th, I tried to kill myself. I'm not gonna get into too many details about that at this moment. Um, I do wanna probably make a video about it sometime later in life, but not right now. Hello, cats. I was basically feeling really hopeless. Um, I ended up spending about a day and a half, two days in the ER. And around 1 a.m., I was um, sent off to be transferred to Harsha Behavioral Center. Now, the reason I'm mentioning Harsha by name is because, um, one, I don't actually live close to Harsha, so I'm not really worried about people figuring out my location. And second, um, I'm going to be complimenting Harsha quite a lot, and I think it's very important to be specific as to who I'm giving these compliments to, because there's no doubt in my mind that there are um, psychiatric hospitals out there that um, maybe have abuse of power, maybe just aren't as great of an experience as what I had. So when I'm um, saying everything that I say in this video, it's very important to me that you know I'm speaking from my personal experience about Harsha Behavioral Center. Um, I do want to talk for a minute about the fact that I was having a panic attack the entire three hour drive over there. Um, there's a lot of stigma around going to psychiatric hospitals. There's plenty of horror movies that take place in psychiatric hospitals. Um, like I said, there's no doubt in my mind that there are psychiatric hospitals out there that do have abuse of power, and that was one of the reasons I was terrified to go. Um, I honestly just didn't think they would be able to help me very much. I didn't think they would care about helping me very much. I was very much expecting to be held there for a couple days. They fed me if they could, considering my eight food allergies. I slept. They watched me and made sure I didn't try to kill myself again, and um, I was pretty sure that was going to be it. So there, there was a moment there that I was terrified that it was gonna be a pretty bad experience. Although I did have this attitude going into the ward. Basically, um, at the hospital, they told me that um, I didn't have a choice because um, if I went in there to the ER with suicidal thoughts without a plan, then um, they would have sat me down and talked to me about it and recommended that I go but it ultimately would have been my choice. I know that for a fact because that's what happened in high school. Um, I went to the um, I went to the hospital for something, I don't remember what, and they asked me, you know, screening questions, any thoughts of suicide, and I said yes, and then that's what happened. And ultimately I decided not to go for stupid reasons, but I decided not to go. But since I did go into the ER due to a suicide attempt, I didn't have a choice. They said if they were to let me go and I attempted again and succeeded, they would be liable for that, which is like, okay. But anyway, so basically my attitude going in was since I don't have a choice, um, I'm just going to give it a real shot. Um, if I'm going to be stuck there, I might as well be trying to make some progress. Um, like I said, I figured all they would be able to do for me was make me take my meds and um, restrain me if I tried killing myself again. But I actually had a really good experience there, and I want to make that very clear. Um, I'm not going to say that I'm happy I tried to kill myself or anything, but I am happy that I went to the psychiatric hospital. Um, it, was, it was just a really good experience, and I'm going to get into why. Um, and if you've been thinking about maybe admitting yourself to a psychiatric hospital, once again, this is my experience at Harsha specifically, but I would recommend looking into it. Um, when I was in high school, um, I told my mom that, and this was before the story I told you earlier, but when I was in high school, I told my mom, I kind of want to be admitted to a mental hospital. And excuse me, sir, my cat is attacking my foot. Hello. And because of all this stigma surrounding mental hospitals, she said no. And um, there's a good chance that that was better for me, that maybe I would have went to one that wasn't as good as Harsha, but there's also a good chance that that kind of set me back. So um, I wanna make this video showing that, you know, it can be a very good thing to go <laughs> and to give it a real shot. Um, I do wanna say I, had ups and downs in the mental hospital. 
there were times where I felt a lot better and there were times I felt just as bad as I went going in. But despite the ups and downs of my mood, especially coming home, um, because I'm still dealing with the things that put me in the mental hospital, there are still times where, like for instance, I wanna self-harm, I wanna relapse. There are times where I'm feeling hopeless. But at the end of the day, I left Harsha feeling a thousand times more equipped and stable and ready to handle these feelings. Um, I've been out of Harsha, let's see, what's today? Almost a week now, actually. I got out on Saturday and today is Thursday. So I got out of Harsha and I have not self-harmed since I went in. And though I do still have suicidal thoughts, I have not even considered acting on any of them. So like I said, feeling a lot more equipped to handle these problems that I'm dealing with. Um, I do want to go ahead and talk about my diagnoses for a minute. So it was either my first or my second day. Um, actually, let me back up for a second. Before I was admitted to Harsha, maybe about a week before, I was seeing my psychiatrist and he diagnosed me with bipolar. Um, manic depressive disorder, bipolar disorder, however you're familiar with it. I went into Harsha and on the first or second day they told me that was actually a misdiagnosis and I have BPD, which I cried about. Um, I want to make a video about my experience being diagnosed with BPD, but not anytime soon because I still am very much processing that. But anyway, um, then I came home and I told my therapist and she was like, it makes sense that you have BPD, but I don't think bipolar was a misdiagnosis. So we did a little test and long story short, my diagnoses now include, let me make sure I don't miss anything, depression, anxiety, BPD, and bipolar. So let's go ahead and start talking about the, the day to day in the psychiatric hospital. It was on a fairly strict schedule. Um, we had certain things happen at certain times, but like if it was like a few minutes earlier or later or we played around with the schedule, it wasn't like a big deal. But we generally had like this happens now, this happens now. For example, we usually woke up around 8.30. Sometimes the lead tech woke us up at 7.30. I think that was probably just because they were having like a busy day, like a couple of discharges that they needed to um, start working on. And so it was just easier if they got us going earlier. That's what I assume because I asked him once and he didn't tell me. <laughs> But yeah, we, um, if we woke up at 8.30, we had breakfast pretty immediately. And then we just chilled in whatever unit we were staying in until it was time to start groups. We had morning, afternoon, and evening questions, and we had morning and evening goal tracking. So basically the goal tracking was in the morning we set two goals for the day. They were supposed to be realistic, attainable goals. Um, for instance, one of my goals was eat as much as I could, which um, the tech mentioned that that sounds really funny out of context, but I have some appetite problems. It's especially during breakfast. It's really hard for me to eat breakfast and it's hard for me to eat a healthy amount in one sitting. So one of my goals was to just eat what I could to just try. Um, another goal I had one day was do not self harm. So, you know, um, a lot of people, their goals every day was participate in groups and like, something else I don't remember what the second one was but like basically you just do something that you think you will help you with your progress that you can actually do so nothing crazy you know they very much had good standards for us um like they wanted to make sure we were trying and they wanted to make sure we were making progress and we were feeling better that was the tech's biggest goal was that we were feeling better by the time we left but they, so they had high standards for us, but it wasn't like ridiculously unattainably high. They were very careful with that, which is something that I really appreciated, especially because I went in there having absolutely no faith in myself. So for them to be very specific about these are supposed to be attainable goals was really helpful. I think my first two goals were try, like try to actually make things work and, um, like adjust or something like that because I wasn't ready to participate in groups yet. I was having too much social anxiety, but I knew that if I had some time, I would be able to. So I think my second goal was like adjust. Then morning questions. Let me see if I can remember these in order because I got them asked twice a day <laughs> for seven days. Um, let's see. Are you having any thoughts of suicide or self-harm? Are you having any thoughts of hurting others? Are you hearing or seeing things that aren't there? Are you feeling overly anxious or worried about anything? Are you feeling overly sad about anything? Are you feeling overly angry about anything? Um, 
I think there's a couple that I'm missing. And then is there anything you want to talk to the staff about? Is there anything you want to talk to your therapist about? So we got asked those twice a day. And um, a lot of the times my answers for those first three questions was, um, yes, I am feeling suicidal. That one actually went back and forth. I think my first two days I was feeling suicidal. And then almost every day after that I wasn't, but the self-harm one was pretty consistently a yes. And then are you having any thoughts of hurting others was every day that was a no for me. I don't struggle with homicidal tendencies. And then um, are you hearing or seeing things that aren't there? That was a yes for me. Not gonna get into that right now, but. So we started groups, I think around 9.30 a.m. Um, groups is basically like group therapy. Um, we had, um, there were different categories that we did like interpersonal substance abuse, um, emotional distress, DBT, which is dialectical behavior therapy, which is actually a really um, common, I think is the word I'm looking for. It's a staple in BPD treatment, but they had everyone do it because it is honestly really helpful. It's like, if I remember correctly, it's supposed to help with emotional regulation, um, optimism, um, some other stuff. Um, dialectical means two statements can be true at the same time. So a big staple in dialectical behavior therapy is instead of either or thinking, it's both and thinking. A lot of the times lately when I've been trying to use my DBT to keep myself calm, um, a statement that I write out a lot is this will be hard and we can do this. Um, instead of saying, oh my God, this is impossible. We can't do this. Like it's okay that it is going to be hard. That doesn't mean that we can't make it through this. So that's DBT a little bit. I don't remember the other groups, but basically they gave us this handout. It was usually a worksheet that we did together and oops, I'm shaking the camera. <laughs> yeah, so it was usually a worksheet that we did together. Um, the thing with the psychiatric hospital is that you were never required to participate. They always recommended you do, but especially on the first day I noticed, um, cause you know, I was there for seven days. So there was a lot of people coming in and out cause I was there for like, what's like, on the longer side of the spectrum, most people are there for three or four days. So, um, what was I saying? Right, especially on the first day, a lot of people just slept their first day because I'm not gonna lie to you, being there on the first day is so fucking hard. I cried five times my first day and then you sleep it off and you, you kind of accept what's going on. And if you're, you know, hopefully you accept that this is actually gonna be helpful for you. So yeah, we, um, we had lunch at 12, we had dinner at six and um, free time was mostly watching movies. Sometimes I played card games. Um, we could pretty much do whatever, honestly. Um, we could nap, like they, they were not strict about free time. Like we couldn't watch R rated movies even though we were in the adult unit, but like, You know, it was whatever. <laughs> I spent most of my free time writing letters to my girlfriend because that made me feel better. Um, it was funny. They had this thing called their 15s, the text, which they had to, um, every 15 minutes, write down what everybody was doing. And I asked one of my favorite texts once, I was like, how many times do you just have down Virgil's writing? And she was like, a lot. Because <laughs> that was pretty much all I did was journal and write letters to my girlfriend. So, because I was so sick of movies. I if it wasn't for the Saw franchise, I would never want to see another movie again. So I'm going to go ahead and get into and talk about everything good that I can remember off the top of my head, at least. First of all, the techs. Um, the techs were so great. Um, all of them, except for one, <laughs> was like... Um, they are just so dedicated to making sure you leave here better than when you came in and they were very personal like you really got to know them on like a one-on-one -on -one basis um i just i am like the texts are like absolutely top tier like i can't even fully describe how much i appreciated having them there there's cats all around me hello hi <laughs> did you laugh at me <laughs> So um, I could go on and on and on about the text, but they were great. They're doing their job perfectly. I love them. <laughs> um, they're really great. Uh, number two that I want to talk about is the cooks, which might sound weird, but I mentioned, er, hello. I'm filming a video. Hey. 
Anyway, I mentioned earlier, I have eight food allergies. They were not prepared for that. <laughs> um, the first day I ate um, a salad, like a plain salad and an apple that I stole. <laughs> and then, um, but after that, like I had better meals than what I eat at home most of the time. Like the cooks were so sweet and they never made, never once made me feel like I was a problem, which is something I've been struggling with my whole life with my food allergies is I always feel like such a burden. They never once made me feel that way. And that is such like, sometimes people do it on accident too, which is fine. Like, you know, especially when they're not prepared, which the cooks were not prepared for me to come in rolling in at 5 a.m. <laughs> like, hey, I've got eight food allergies. What can you give me? And they made it work. And I ate chicken tenders pretty much every day, but they were really, really good chicken tenders. So I'm not gonna complain. Um, number three is the other patients, which might sound weird, but while I was on the ride over to uh, Harsha, um, they let me use my phone, which they probably shouldn't have, <laughs> but they did. <laughs> and um, what I was mentioning that I was scared about like a piece of power and one of my ex roommates was like, it's the other patients I'd be worried about. And I still don't really get why they said that because like the most any of the other patients ever did was make me a little uncomfortable and not even in a personal way, just in a like a, they're being a little, little aggressive to this tech right now. That's a little weird. And that was it. Like the other patients were just like me. They're just people trying to get help or they were on ED and they were just people trying to write out their time. <laughs> like, I don't know why my ex roommate said that about the patients. I think it was honestly a little insensitive, but the other patients were all great. I made good friends with some of them. I am going to miss one of them for like the rest of my life. She was so sweet. <laughs> um, number four I want to talk about is the lack of transphobia which might come out of a left field, but I fully expected to be misgendered and dead named the entire time. And I was not. Um, I even had other patients um, sticking up for me and being like, no, he's a he, he's a he. And like, that was really great. Um, the techs, like um, there was one tech, my favorite, who's the lead tech. He was like, he called me like brother and big man and stuff like that. It was really sweet. <laughs> um, yeah, so like the only time that I got dead named was when the nurses were giving me my medication because they had to make sure they were giving it to the right person. So like on one hand, I'm like, just call my last name. But on the other hand, I'm like, I don't like that either. So who cares? <laughs> so yeah, the lack of transphobia was really great. Um, I do have something funny to talk about later about um, being trans in a mental ward, but I'll talk about that later. Uh, number five is groups. The group therapy was really effective. Um, it's the reason why I left feeling so much more equipped. Um, yeah, the group therapy was really great. Um, they taught us a lot of good skills um, that I try to utilize. Sometimes in the moment it's hard, especially with BPD impulsiveness. Sometimes I do shit, but um, yeah, the group therapy was really great. I don't know what else to say about it. Um, there was one group that was like about catastrophizing, which it was so funny. The tech could not say that word as much as she tried. And then she finally got it like two days later. And we were all like, yeah, you did it. <laughs> and um, it was about how to recognize catastrophizing and how to decatastrophize. There was one on substance abuse that was about boredom because a lot of people relapse because they're bored. And so it was like, here is a huge list of things that you can do. Which one of these sound interesting to you? Okay, now how are you gonna do it? Okay, what are some constraints that you have? Like money, transportation, what is it? All right, let's fix that. Like the groups were very in depth and very helpful. So I still have all of the worksheets for all of the groups that I did. I'm gonna go through them with my girlfriend. <sighs> yeah. Number six is the therapists. Um, they were really great. Since we're an acute care facility, the routine is that you speak to the therapist once and then they figure some stuff out for you and that's pretty much it. Um, I spoke to a therapist pretty much every day because I would seek her out and be like, is it okay if we talk about some things? And she made time for me even when she didn't have to. And sometimes the therapists ran their own groups, which was really helpful. We did one on self-care. Um, which was, they showed us a video talking about how self-care doesn't need to be like some complicated or difficult thing. It can be something as simple as sitting in a comfortable chair at work or spending 10 minutes in nature. Like, 
um, the, the therapists were really great. They were very sweet and they did their job very effectively. Um, I had one talk with the therapist who I asked her if she could tell me more about BPD because I was just diagnosed and I was still low-key mourning <laughs> because I've always said that BPD sounds like the hardest thing to have. Here I am. <laughs> And she went through this whole big list of behaviors and symptoms and I wrote down the ones that I identified with and I talked with my girlfriend about it and it was really great. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and get into the negatives now. There aren't that many of them. Number one was I missed my girlfriend. Hi, baby. Hi. I missed her a lot, which goes into number two, calls were only 10 minutes, but we got two calls a day. And if like everyone, day day's fucking with the receipts. They just fucking with the receipts. What are you doing? And if everyone got through their calls in time, sometimes you could get an extra call. So they were super lenient with that. It was great. So that's also a positive. Number three was that the beds were uncomfortable, which it's a psych ward. <laughs> like, oh no, the beds were uncomfortable, but they were. And number four is kind of the big one. They promised that I'd get some of my stuff back and I never did. Um, there was actually an emergency situation where like five days in, I had to beg one of the techs to find my medicine for my eczema. And he finally found it. And he actually ended up writing an incident report about it. Cause he's like, this is ridiculous. You should have gotten that like your first day here. And it was like, but yeah, the rest of my stuff, I, I got back now, like since I went home, but in my time in the psych ward, I never, um, hello. I never got it back, which was a little frustrating, but you know, whatever. Now, before I wrap up, I have some questions that my friends asked me. Um, did you have roommates? No, everyone else did. I didn't because I'm trans. <laughs> they didn't want to put me in with a girl because they were afraid we would have sex because I'm technically a boy. And they didn't want to put me in with a boy because they were afraid we would have sex because I'm technically a girl. So, you know, no roommates for me, <laughs> which made me laugh really hard <laughs> because it was confirmed that because because uh, me and that girl I was talking about earlier, who I'm going to miss a lot. We asked if we could be roommates after her current roommate left and they came back and they were like, because of your like gender identity, you guys can't be roommates. <laughs> it was really funny. How's the food? Really good. Um, if you ask some other people, they didn't like it. There was one person who complained about literally everything all the time, including the food, but I really liked the food. Like I said, there were some meals I had, hi Day Day. There were some meals I had that were better than what I would eat at home. So the food was really good. I liked it. What kind of support are you getting? Like just talking to psychiatrist, group therapy or what? So I did mention the group therapy, but um, like I said, the t excuse me. Like I said, the techs were just really great. And if you pulled one of them aside, they would help you out. Um, I actually had a panic attack my very last day because I was scared to leave. And the techs helped me pull me out of that panic attack. And <clears throat> that was great. So what kind of what kind of support were you receiving? All of it, anything that you asked for. Um, they were all great. Also, how does checking out work? Because I feel like movies and TV shows make psych hospitals to almost be this Hotel California type of deal. They really do. And here's how checking out works. I checked out. <laughs> like, um... So there are some people who I mentioned who were there on ED emergency detention. They had to be there at least three days. After that, they were free to leave. Um, I was involuntarily checked in, but then apparently, according to like, sus, apparently along the way, how, what am I saying? At one point or another, my involuntary admission turned to voluntary, but no one told me that. So I could have left like way before the seven days were up, but whatever. Um, I'm happy I was there for as long as I was because I got as much help as I needed. So, um, yeah, you just check out. <laughs> That's it. <laughs> it's not that complicated. It's not that hard. There aren't people who are like, oh, are you sure? Like, oh, okay, we'll do that tomorrow. Or no, you check out. That's it.
Someone said, hey, congrats on the discharge. Was there anyone interesting you met while you were there? Anything that changed your perspective? What was your room like? Anyone interesting you met while you were there? Everyone. Everyone was interesting. Um, I don't want to talk about them too much because they're not really my stories to tell. But um, anything that changed your perspective kind of ties into that, the people I met. Um, I especially want to talk about the lead tech who... Um, no, I was just looking. You're good. Um, I especially want to talk about the lead tech, which, again, it's not my story to tell. Honestly, I don't think he would care if I told this story, but I'm not going to. But um, he had a story that really changed my perspective on a whole lot. And um, I know it's hard that I can't get into specifics or don't want to get into specifics, but I just don't think it'd be very respectful of the people that I met to be talking about their lives on the internet. So um, yes, I did meet interesting people. And yes, they did change my perspective on a lot of things, but I'm not going to get into that right now. What was your room like? It was a room, I don't know, had beige walls. Some of them had purple walls, which was fun. Um, there were two beds. I had my own bathroom. Um, I couldn't close the door all the way. Like, we could, but we weren't allowed to because it locked from the outside. There was a curtain separating the two beds. Um, I had a little stand that I could put my stuff in. I hid my notebook under the mattress every night because I was terrified they were gonna take it and it was the only thing keeping me sane. <laughs> if they took the journal away, it was like taking my girlfriend away. <laughs> and I was like, can't do that. Um, it was just a room, I don't know. It was cool, it was fine. We didn't spend much time in it, really just to go to sleep. But yeah, I spent seven days in a psychiatric hospital and it was great. I'm happy I did it. If you have any more questions, um, if there's enough of them, I'll just make another video. If not, I'll answer them in the comments. Um, I don't usually ask this because I think it's a little cheesy, but please share this video. I think it's important for people to hear. Um, I think it's, I kind of want to fight that stigma a little bit. Um, I think it's a little fucked up that I asked to go to a psychiatric hospital when I was in high school. My mom was like, no, those are evil places. So. <laughs> Yeah, go ahead and share this video for me, and um, yeah, I will see you next time. Stay proud.